So, you want to know all about the color ramp node in Blender? Well, go ahead and go to Lowe's, buy a can of paint, and then go to one of those skate parks. Start painting some of that stuff. Color ramp. <laughs> uh. Hey guys, one my test by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.9. Evie, once again, taking a look at how to use the color ramp node, all about the color ramp node today. By default, we only have one color availability, so we can change the base color, and this is pretty much going to change the entire color of our object, which is very useful if you're doing, you know, specific things. Maybe you just want to have like a red ball, you know, I can jing all the way, I don't know. You want, to, you want just a single color ball. Well, maybe that's not good enough for you. Maybe you want more than that. Maybe your heart desires multiple colors, okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to hit shift A, and we're going to search for a color ramp node right there. Boom. And we're going to grab that and put it right there. Look at that. Boom. It looks better. It looks so much better already. Doesn't this, this whole, this whole node setup looks gorgeous already, right? All right, let's hook it up. We're going to plug the color into the base color of the principal BSDF, BSDF and you're going to see it's not going to change much. It's going to get very slightly gray, as you can see, compared to that white, right? Very slightly gray. The reason it's gray is because if we look at this color ramp node, you can see down here at the bottom we have this factor, which is on 0.5. Which means that our color for our sphere is being drawn from the exact middle of these two colors, which is black and white. So the middle of black and white is gray, obviously. So if I hit this little plus, you can see it's going to put one right there in the middle. And this is the color that we have being represented right there in the exact center. So if I wanted to go and change that, we can go ahead and pull this either to the right and make it more white. Or we can pull all the way to the left and make it more black, obviously, right? Which is very cool. So we have the ability to change the factor and how much the uh, these two different points that we have are influencing our sphere, um, which is nice. So I'm gonna put this on back on 0.5, and what we're gonna do now is let's say I don't want black and white. Let's say that I want this one all the way over here that is black currently to be blue. I want this one to be dark blue like that, right? Then I want this white one. I want this white one to be yellow like this, nice little golden soft yellow, right? So the middle of that is this like uglyish tannish whatever you want to call that, right? Doesn't look that great, but it's fine. Now, maybe perhaps um, let's go ahead and because right now I want both of these colors to be visible. Like at, at the moment, the only one color that's visible is the color in the center. We can fix that in multiple different ways. You can do many, 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 many different things. We've done so many different things in the past. Um, you can have like a noise texture set up. So I can hit Shift A and add in a noise texture. So that'd be noise right there. And then plug the color into the color ramp here. And you can see now if I, if I do that, all of the places where there's noise will be blue and the rest of it will be that yellow color. None of that in the middle kind of stuff going on. I'm going to turn the detail up and I'm also going to turn the scale up. So you can see we have that nice blue coming through and we also have the yellow. More important, let's do, let's, instead of a noise, let's do a Musgrave because Musgrave will be able to see because it has bigger um, chunks. Uh, there we go. Very nice. All right. So we can turn the detail up or uh, we can turn it down either way. We can turn it up. We can turn the dimension. Uh, let's turn the dimension all the way up so it's kind of smooth like that, right? And then we'll turn the scale uh, let's turn the scale down, right? See if we can just get a, a little bit more, a little bit more of that yellow in there, or something like that. That's good. So we have two distinct colors. We have that yellow and that blue, right? So let's say I want more yellow. Let's just go ahead and pull this yellow closer to the blue. Now you can see it is now harshening and hardening those those yellow edges, right? Because we're we're making more of the line that we have over here yellow because we're we're phasing away that blue fade. Now let's say you don't want to fade, right? You want it just to transition to one color to the next. Let's add another color. Let's hit, this little, let's hit this little plus button. And it'll add a color directly in the center, right? So let's change the color of this to something extremely different than both these colors, which would be green. And we'll make that as bright as possible. So now you can see we have mainly green, but if you look close, we can have a little bit of yellow right there. So if I go ahead and I pull this yellow closer, you can see we have a lot more of that yellow showing up. Let's pull the green as well. So the green is harsher edged on the blue, and then the yellow is harsher edged on this. Let's actually make this yellow color something very different, like red. Now it looks like we're looking through a thermal lens. Perfect. We're now in the military. Congratulations. All right. We're going to go ahead and move these all back because maybe I don't want this like soft transition, whatnot. This is, this is bold. This is malarkey. I don't want none of this, this, this soft transition stuff. Okay. Maybe I want some hard transitions. I want it just to start and stop like that. We're going to change this from linear to constant. Now constant, you can see instantly all of those, that fading just goes away. It's completely gone now and it is just not doesn't exist, right? So let's go ahead and pull these back. And now you can see we have those very harsh. Let me get rid of this dimension a little bit. There we go. Much better. So you can see we get, we got that those very harsh edges compared to this, right? So that looks 
uh, much different. Now we have this hard edge. Let's go ahead and grab this red and pull this red back as well. So we can create layers, as you can see, right? Which is very, very cool. And you can't really do this any other way in Blender. Um, and this is a really, really great way to come up with multiple different types of textures. So I can just keep adding these little plus buttons, hitting the minus ones to get rid of them, adding new ones, dragging them over here, creating new colors, creating new pieces, which is just very, 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 very cool. So you can see how we can have so many different like layers or what, what not, whatever you want to call it. We have so many different choices and ability to add a lot of different layers. Now, let's say you want to go ahead and do something a little different. Let's get rid of this uh, Musgrave and let's put this back to default. So if we do this little button right here, we can hit reset color ramp and it'll reset all the colors, which is nice. Obviously, right here, we have RGB. Let's talk about this real quick. Let's do this. Let me put this on random colors again. So if we have two colors, that's a nice red to um, yellow gradient here you can see if i had this on rgb that's just regular red gluing green blue but we can definitely change this um to hue saturation and value and you know all these other ones we have here you can see if we grab this bad boy let's actually do a different color than that let's do a crazier color like two colors i don't match there we go that's better all right so if i had this on rgb it's just going to transition from blue to yellow it's going to make some nasty color in the middle like whatever this color is might, might as well be gray we don't want that maybe you want just it, it, it just changes the hue and saturation to get there instead you can have you can see you have all these different colors in the middle now um which is just absolutely awesome you know, same thing with uh with with this one as well so we have near far uh clockwise and counterclockwise as well which typically you only want to stay on the near and rgb but it's nice to just have those there so real quick let's go ahead and do one more thing that's very important maybe you want a gradient maybe you actually want to see this gradient show up on the sphere instead of it just being purple purple is this middle piece so it's only drawing from the middle maybe you want the whole gradient very cool we can do that very easily shift a search gradient texture plop that right there a skadoosh plug that color into the into the factor now you can see we have a nice gradient beautiful gorgeous some might say oh yes anyway we can change this uh a couple of things we can change the type of gradient that we have um which is never is usually the best you're probably going to want to leave it on um linear we want to put that back on linear, but now maybe you want to rotate this. Maybe you want to scale it. Maybe you want to move it around because it's kind of like sideways. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fix that by hitting Shift A, Search, and then we're going to do Mapping. So we're going to type in Mapping, and then we're going to put this right here and plug the vector into the vector. There we go. Now you can see it's just made everything blue, and the reason for this is because it's only pulling from this first one because we got to change around some of these settings. Now if I move this around enough, you'll see that the color does change to all those different colors, but it's still not very small reason for this is we need to add one more node. Yes, I know. It's crazy. Insane, right? Shift A. Search. Texture. Coordinate. I'm going to grab this and plug the generated into the vector right here. Now you can see when we do this, it definitely has all of the gradient on there. And the good thing about this is, is now it now looks like this. Like before we added the mapping node. It looks exactly the same, right? So if I put this back up, it looks exactly the same. The cool thing is, is now we can actually rotate this bad boy. So let's go ahead and grab some of these values, move them around. We can change this around, rotate it so it goes top to bottom. It, it is a little, it, it's a little bit of a, little bit of a, what you want to call it? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? A hassle. That's it. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. A little bit of a hassle, but hey, it works once you get it going, you know? Uh, you can change the Z value to scale things down a little bit and then pull it back up. Location. Uh, the location is always a hassle. I move very small increments and you got to figure out which one is going where there we go the, the, there we go that's what i'm looking for right there cool we got this and like i said i could fill around with this a lot more get this nice and even if you hit one while hovering your cursor over top of the object you can see the front view so you can really see uh if it's straight or not that looks pretty straight right there move it down very nice so you can see now we have this nice gradient completely straight on our ball. We can also do go back and change the scaling again, make it bigger, make it smaller, scrunch it together and whatnot. Um, very, very nice things we can do here. And we can always, once again, go back to our colors and then change our colors on the fly, which is very, very cool. It's just very, very cool. It's one of my favorite other than the holdout shader, of course. And I just really, really, really love it. So I hope you ladies and gentlemen learned something new that looks amazing. Hope you guys learned something new today. Hope it helps you understand the color ramp shader a little bit more and subsequently some of the other shaders uh, on accident. But I will see you ladies and gentlemen in the next tutorial. But until then, bye-bye.